Welcome to another broadcast of the Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the March 30, 31st meeting of Lorain County Board of Commissioners. A thought for today is a Chinese proverb which says, a gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a person perfected without trials. The first item uh, of business on our agenda is a decision on an expedited two annexation petition of 91.23 acres from LaGrange Township to the village of LaGrange, attorney Paul Blevins as the agent. The Board of Commissioners especially Commissioner Kalo's administrative assistant who kept track, we have received over <coughs> 80 emails or phone calls regarding this matter. It's of high interest to the people in LaGrange Township and Village. I would like to say that in my past history as a Carlisle Township clerk, my experience has been that LaGrange Township and Village have a long history of collaborating on issues of importance to their respective communities. I believe it's unfortunate that today's meeting is a subject of a divided community. Um, but the commissioners are here to make a decision on an annexation that was presented to us and as unpleasant as that may be, we will have to do our job. First of all, I would like to recognize Paul Blevins, who is the attorney uh, representing the petitioners. Mr. Blevins, if you'd like to come to the microphone. up a little bit. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, as uh, President Blair indicated, uh, we are here on the annexation of approximately 91.23 acres from LaGrange Township uh, into LaGrange Village. Uh, hearkening back to the comments that uh, Mrs. Blair made last week with regards to the annexation law, we are proceeding here under a new annexation law, uh, different than uh, in past years. Uh, it's expedited and it is, uh, has new procedures different from those that the commissioners have dealt with in the past. And I, I'm sure that the commissioners are fully aware of the law and, and, and uh, uh, up on the, the changes. I offer my comments in many ways for the, for the record and as well for some of the lay people in the office right here today. Um, as everyone knows, the process for annexation is controlled by the Ohio Revised Code. Uh, under the new law, there are several different ways within which you can proceed with an annexation. This annexation is seeking to proceed under section 709.023. It's a very specialized and expedited process. Uh, when the state legislature reviewed the annexation laws, they were concerned about uh, some of the feeling that townships were being harmed by annexation. Uh, and those, the, the harm was being caused when property was actually being removed from the township, removed from the tax rolls for those townships, and leaving them with less of a tax base. Under the annexation procedure that we're following today, point zero two three, that will not happen. Under this expedite uh, process, the land, the 91 acres that is currently in LaGrange Township will remain in LaGrange Township. It will simply also be included within the village. Now LaGrange Village is very unique uh, within the county in that every portion of the village is still within the township. They pay taxes to both the village and the township. They have the right to vote for both township trustees and village representatives. So under 023, that property is going to stay in the township. It is going to stay within the township's tax base. And it can never be removed from the township. So we're dealing with a situation where the legislature, legislation has said, in that situation where the property is not being removed from the township and the tax base is not being affected for the township, we're going to allow for these expedited procedures where we're going to set out specific guidelines and if the 100% uh, of the landowners want to annex their property into the village and they've met the seven criteria that we set forth within the code, 
then uh, the commissioners have an obligation to um, approve the annexation and move it along to, um, to the next stage. Uh, last week, prior to the, to the meeting, uh, I believe the commissioner received and I received a copy of a letter from Jerry Phillips, uh, attorney for some of the residents in LaGrange Township. In that letter, Mr. Phillips identifies nine objections uh, that he, uh, uh, to the annexation. And I'll just quickly address mm -hmm. those. Uh, I've spoken with Mr. Innes, your counsel, and provided him with, with, uh, with my thoughts on the matter, and I'm sure that he has provided his thoughts on it as well to you. In point number one, Mr. Phillips alleges that the annexation petition does not contain all of the owners in the annexation territory. And specifically, he was saying that uh, the roadways that are owned by the state and the county uh, are, not, are not included, or are included in the annexation, but the county and the state have not signed off on the petition. Well, legally, that's, legally, the owners are defined as not including the state or the county. Uh, and that is, at Ohio Revised Code Section 709.02e, owner is defined as any adult individual who is legally competent, the state or any political subdivision is defined in Section 5713.081, and any firm, trustee, or private corporation, any, any of which is seized of a freehold estate in the land except that easements and any railroad, utility, street, any highway rights of way held in fee by easement or by dedication and acceptance are not included within those meanings. So Mr. Phillips' objection that the, road, that the state and the county, county have not been identified or signed off on this petition uh, just is not legally correct. Uh, those, those are not included within the definition of owners. <coughs> Uh, objection number two, Mr. Phillips alleged that the petitioners have failed to give the required notices to the owners of the property. Um, at the time that we filed the petition, we filed uh, correspondence along with it identifying all of the adjacent property owners. Uh, included within those identifications were uh, Mr. and Mrs. Glover and Mr. and Mrs. Palmieri. Uh, the following day, we prepared, my office prepared um, correspondence to all of the people who are identified as adjacent property owners, and those were sent out on those same day. I provided Mr. Innes with an affidavit from my secretary as to the procedures and how that those letters, as well as copies of the letters that went to Mr. Glover, or Mr. and Mrs. Glover, and Mr. and Mrs. Palmieri that went out that day. Uh, moreover, if you look at uh, the grounds that the county commissioners have uh, to review and determine, um, the code just says, that you have to make sure that the notices were sent. As to whether they were received or not is not really the legal issue, is what were they sent. Objection number three, uh, Mr. Phillips alleges that the annexation will create islands of land remaining in LaGrange Township. Um, by definition within the code, an island has to be surrounded by four sides uh, by, the, uh, by the village. There are no such parcels of land within this annexation. There are some peninsulas but peninsulas are different than islands. I'd also like to note that we have, um, uh, the county commissioners actually, you have provided a copy of the annexation map and the petition to the county engineer's office, and the county engineer has approved it uh, under their, after their review. Uh, objection number four is Mr. Phillips complained that the village of LaGrange had filed its ordinances indicating what services it would provide to the property uh, 21 days after the petition was filed. Uh, he claims that, or actually the code says that this should be done within 20 days after the petition, uh, should, uh, with it after the petition is filed. Nevertheless, the only basis that there would be for denying the petition with regards to this ordinance would be if there was no ordinance filed at all. Um, when you look at uh, the subsection which details the seven grounds upon which the commissioners are to review this annexation, that's um, 709.023 subsection E, Subsection 6 deals with uh, the ordinances, and that section says, uh, the municipal corporation to which annexation is proposed has agreed to provide to the territory proposed for annexation the services specified in the relevant ordinance or resolution adopted under Division C of this section. It just says that the, the um, in that section, and that's the section that, that you're reviewing this annexation on, uh, that the village has to indicate that it will provide the services. It doesn't in that section indicate that it has to be done within a specific time period or that the whole mess should be thrown out if the village doesn't do something within one day. And on that, on that let me, let me uh, refer to revised code section 709.015. 
it basically deals with proce the procedural requirements of the code. And, uh, and I'm going to skip down to just the last sentence in that section. It says, the board shall cure a procedural defect and shall not deny a petition for annexation solely upon the basis of a procedural defect. Uh, if the village is filing this, filing their ordinances on the 21st day as opposed to the 20th day is considered a procedural defect, which we don't necessarily can see that at this point, which we don't can see that, uh, the board and the legislature has set forth that the board shouldn't waste everybody's time and make the petition start all over again and get, get the village to file the things on the 20th day. You should cure such a defect, if that's a defect at all. Uh, objection number five, Mr. Phillips indicated that the village of LaGrange cannot provide the necessary sanitary sewer services until the completion of the Durham Ridge subdivision. Uh, he uh, again alleges this is a violation of uh, subsection six. But as, we, as I discussed before, subsection six just requires that the village indicate whether it will provide the services or not. Uh, it doesn't have to indicate whether it can, and it's not for the commissioners to really investigate as to whether the village can, should, or, or whatnot. It's just, have they agreed? and have they gone through the process. And in this situation, uh, the village has said that it will provide the sewer services to the development once it goes through. We have Mayor Strauss here in the, um, in the audience if there's any question about the, uh, uh, the truth to that fact. And uh, it's my understanding there is none. Um, objection number five, uh, let's see, objection number six was similar to objection number five with regards to the 21 days. And I'll just refer back to that same analysis. Uh, objection number seven was uh, similar to, again, similar to uh, the 21 days, and again, uh, I won't reiterate my, my, my uh, points on that. Uh, objection number eight was that the road maintenance ordinance passed by the village was legally deficient. Um, the issue of road maintenance is raised by subsection E7 of the code, and it states that if a street or highway will be divided or segmented by the boundary line, between the township and the municipal corporation as to create a road maintenance problem. The municipal corporation to which the annexation is proposed has agreed as a condition of the annexation to assume the maintenance of the street or highway or to otherwise correct the problems. But first let me say the county engineer has reviewed this annexation and they haven't identified any problem, uh, road maintenance problems. Nevertheless, we have, uh, the village had gone forward and said that if there is a problem and uh, with regards to road maintenance, that they'll take care of whatever they need to take care of. And um, that's all that's required by the code. Um, Mr. Uh, Phillips' argument uh, to the contrary notwithstanding. Objection number nine, uh, Mr. Phillips argues that the annexation petition did not contain an, an accurate legal description. Uh, by a letter from the county engineer, uh, soon after we filed the petition, uh, the engineer indicated that there was an error of a typographical na nature in the, uh, in the legal description. Uh, it's typographical in that it does not change the amount of land that is being annexed. It does not change the perimeter or boundary line of the par parcels to be annexed. Uh, in order to correct the record on March 7th, uh, the petitioners filed a motion to amend the petition and on the day after we provided the county commissioners with an amended legal description. The sole change between the first legal description and the amended one was the deletion in course nine of the legal description of the language, quote, and the corporation line of the village of LaGrange, end quote. That's all that's been changed. That line was, that, that <coughs> phrase was deleted. Um, the new statute that we're operating under does not s specify the means for raising the issue of a correction such as this. So we filed a motion uh, to amend, which was styled on 709-031 from the old code. Uh, the power to act, however, is uh, within the commissioners, and that's de derived from Revised Code Section 709.015, which I read to you earlier, which indicate that the commissioners shouldn't turn something down based on a procedural defect. That it, it should only uh, turn something down if there's, substantive, if there's a substantive uh, deficiency in the petition. That's the nine objections that Mr. Uh, Phillips has brought. We don't believe that he has stated anything <coughs> legally relevant to this, this annexation that would require denial of the annexation. And on behalf of the property owners uh, of the property who would like to have their property moved or included within the village, I would ask that the county commissioners approve the annexation today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blevins. Mr. Phillips? 
My name is uh, Gerald W. Phillips. My address is 35955 Detroit Road. Uh, this is a special annexation procedure. It's called a Type II. Uh, the, for tax purposes, the annex area will remain within the township for tax purposes, and, and, and that's specifically provided in 709.023, but the zoning is going to be subject to the village. Uh, the services are going to be provided by the village. So uh, from a practical point, it's removed from the township for, for services and that. The only thing on a type two is the tax stays with the, with the township. So Mr. Blevins' comments to that extent, I believe, are incorrect. Also, uh, he's incorrect in, in this aspect. Uh, the people in the township do not vote for the village council members, and the people in the village do not vote for the trustees. And I know that for a fact because we had a referendum dealing with uh, zoning changes, and the village didn't vote for it. They're separate legal entities. They're not, they're, they're not the same, and they can't vote for each other uh, uh, legally. So that statement by Mr. Blevins uh, is incorrect. Uh, the uh, petition suffers from from a, a number of defects which he alluded to. Uh, first of all, the county commissioners have no legislative authority to change 709.023, and you can't change and extend the time period in which the law requires. You have to apply the law, as Commissioner Blair says, whatever the statute says, you've got to comply with. And the fact that uh, on two of the errors, uh, that uh, uh, they <coughs> did not timely file the statement of services that they will provide or their statement that they will provide the necessary road maintenance is, is legally defective. You can't extend that date. And the statute is clear. It says that the clerk of the legislative authority of the municipal corporation to which the annexation is proposed shall file the ordinances or resolutions adopted under this division with the Board of County Commissioners within 20 days following the date the petition is filed. Your own, your, own, uh, your own sheet that deals with uh, your checklist clearly indicates that the petition was filed on the 22nd. Teresa Upton, who has this sheet in the file, clearly notes that these petitions, uh, these ordinances were filed on, on, on March 15th. They were due on 14th. Now the township had to file their objections within 25 days. They timely filed it because they were filed on March 18th the day before the 25th day. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the petitioners didn't, didn't follow the law, but you can't change the law. You can't change the law. You're not the state legislator. They passed that statute. You've got to comply the law as it is. And, and, and they did not timely file those things. Therefore, on the date that they were supposed to, there was no statement of services, and there's no statement that they were providing road maintenance. Therefore, from that perspective, uh, they were, this petition is clearly legally defective, not in compliance with uh, 70923E, which required that statement filed within 20 days, and 70923E7, uh, 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 where that road maintenance thing had to be filed within 20 days. Also, uh, they needed to file an accurate legal description. As we sit here today, there's been no motion accepted. I mean, there's been no approval of the motion to amend. So, so we don't have a correct legal description before you on that petition. Uh, maybe the first thing you should do is, 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 is approve the amendment because you haven't done it as of today. And once that's done, they gotta go through the process again with providing the, the correct uh, notice. And the notice in, in, the, de in the defect in the uh, and the legal description wasn't, wasn't a typographical error. It dealt with the <coughs> substance adder as far as whether the boundary line was the village or the township uh, in connection with uh, one of the uh, uh, items. Uh, the uh, issue about islands, uh, I guess that's an interpretation of the statute. If you look at 709.23E5, it says islands, and, and, and they will be segments of, of slivers of land included in uh, uh, the, 
the uh, 2.5 acres of road highway that they say aren't going to be part. They're going to be surrounded. They're going to be surrounded uh, uh, by 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 roadways and and in the in, in, in the annexed territory. They'll be isolated, uh, and there's uh, a number of areas there. So uh, I believe. Uh, uh, that statute means you don't create islands, and that's what they have done, and that's 709.023E5. Uh, in connection with uh, 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 the road maintenance thing, if you look at the annexation section, you'll see there'll be a small, a small section of 301, which is being annexed, and a small section of Biggs. Clearly segments the road. In their ordinance, they don't claim that they're going to uh, maintain anything other than annexation, the annex area. That's what their, their resolution of providing road services <coughs> states. It doesn't say they're going to ma maintain the, the other portion of the segmented road, which uh, 709023E indicates that, that they needed to do. So it's deficient from, uh, from uh, that perspective. As far as providing services, uh, that statement that they'll provide uh, uh, sanita uh, sanitary sewer and water and storm sewers, uh, you know, the, the village of Lagrange, uh, uh, by a, a resolution 10-96, uh, has joined the Lorco facility planning area, and that's exhibited by Exhibit G in, in, in the information I, I provided, and Exhibit H, which is the final entry from the Common Pleas Court of Lorraine County clearly adopted under 61-1902 that facility planning area and, and I believe 15 townships. Uh, the only ones that didn't sign on are Columbia, Penfield, and Brighton. Uh, so this is it within the facility planning area of Lorco. Uh, Exhibit I is an agreement between Lorraine County and uh, Lorco to jointly service this area, uh, which includes all those townships. And Exhibit J is an agreement between Lorco and Avon Lake to provide services uh, within that uh, facility planning area. As we sit here today, this particular area uh, in LaGrange Township and LaGrange Township is in Lorco's planning district. And it cannot be switched uh, uh, without going through a procedure. So as we sit here today legally, the village of LaGrange cannot legally provide the services because it's not in their district. If they want to, uh, uh, they, can, they can appeal and request that and go through NAWACA, and that's exhibit by Exhibit K. They need to follow Policy 4.6. <coughs> As of today, they have not done that. As of today, the village cannot legally, under no circumstances, facilitate that area under the Clean Water Act of 2002 in the Waste Water Management Plan and District adopted by uh, uh, LORCO and evidenced by those agreements. So they can put all they want that they have a, a piece of paper that says they'll provide it, but if legally they can't, they can't. And the annexation statute says that they got to be able to provide the services, just not write a piece of paper saying they can. And if they legally can't do that, then, th then they haven't met the conditions of uh, 709.023E6. They can't provide the services. And you can't approve an annexation under, under a Type 2 unless they can legally do it. Not that they, they state they can do it, but legally do it, both from uh, a legal perspective and, e and even from uh, uh, a practical. We don't even know as of now whether they have the capacity. We don't know how many uh, 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 homes are going to be built in the area and in, in, in the amount of volume and whether they have capacity in the facility to do that. And EPA would have to approve that. What they should have done was got e EPA approval indicating they have the capacity and went through the process of getting legally that they can. And they haven't done that yet. And since they haven't done that yet, unfortunately, they haven't met the statute that they can legally provide the services. And uh, as was indicated at uh, the last meeting, your job is to look at the statute, and if they meet the conditions, uh, then you can approve it. If not, you have to reject it. And they haven't met the conditions. They haven't met the conditions. Uh, as far as 709.023EC, they can't pr legally provide those services for the sanitary source. It's not in their district. They haven't gotten a WACA approval. And, and, and they haven't met the statutory requirements of, fi of, of filing the required statements 
uh, within the period. I mean, it's unfortunate that uh, uh, they, they didn't comply with the statute. I know Mr. Blevins, and, uh, you know, I respect him, but the law is the law. You can't re re rewrite the law. You can't rewrite 709-023 uh, and, and, and change the, the periods of time. Uh, and uh, therefore, you have to reject this on the basis it doesn't comply with those statutory guidelines. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Mr. Ennis. Mr. Phillips, if I may. There's a couple questions I would like to. <coughs> Mr. Blevins brings up section 709.015, which specifically says that the procedural requirements of this statute are directory in nature. It subsequently says the Board of Commissioners shall allow those defects to be cured and shall den not deny the petition solely based on procedural defects. Do you have a response yeah, to that to, argument? I think you need to look at 709.21 that speci specifically defines eight errors which will not be fatal. And it says once the annexation has become final, and the annexation territory has been recognized as part of the annexation, annexing municipal cap, uh, corporation and, tax, and taxes levy, then, th then, you, then no error, irregularity, or defect shall be uh, uh, able to be asserted to invalidate it. So 709.21 clearly indicates when defects won't be fatal to the procedures. And uh, uh, I don't consider uh, 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 specific statutory provisions as far as dates as procedural, they're substantive as far as filing the necessary requirements. The, uh, the uh, 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 amendment of uh, the petition may be <coughs> procedural in the sense of, uh, of amending the legal description to, to amend it and, 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 and go through the process uh, again uh, without having to refile, but uh, I don't consider uh, uh, statutory obligations imp imposed by the state legislature who has legislative power in the state as procedural. When they specify deadlines, uh, they are met. Otherwise, then you can file something 30 days, 40 days late. What, what's the time period then? I mean, you know, th then why have the law in the first place? If that's procedural, maybe we should change, you know, uh, uh, add, add other items in the seven enumerated ones too. You know, unfortunately, you can't rewrite the, rewrite the law, and uh, neither Mr. Blevins or the county commissioners has that authority. It says what it says within 20 days. Okay, then I have one other question going upon your, your statement that the commissioners cannot rewrite write the law. Um, the provision regarding the services says that the municipal corporation has to submit an ordinance in which they agree to provide the territory with certain services. You have indicated several times that they need to prove that they can do this and they need to demonstrate that ability. Um, I don't see that language in that statute. Aren't, aren't we rewriting that requirement into the statute, Mr. Phillips? Well, what's your definition of agree? Does that mean they can put on a piece of paper and say that they'll, they'll, they'll provide the services when legally they cannot provide it? I think uh, a reasonable interpretation of that is <coughs> that they have to agree to provide services that they're legally able to provide. Otherwise, they don't meet the condition. The purpose of the statute is to make sure that the annexing municipality or entity can, can provide those services, okay, and have agreed to provide those. If they can't, that, by, by putting on a piece of paper saying we'll provide those services when legally they're unable, it, it, it's, 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 it, it's meaningless. So when you look at the word agree, okay, uh, you, 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 there's implicitly in, implied in that is that they legally can provide the services and they have agreed to provide those services. If they can't provide it, then, then that statement that they're, that they're agreeing to is, 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 is empty <coughs> and, and, and has no uh, substance. Okay, thank you. Just to clarify the record on one item, commissioners, with regard to the voting in the township, uh, the, the residents in the village do not vote on zoning issues. They do vote 
for the elected officials of the township. Thank you, Jerry. Do you have any other comments uh, that you wish to make to the commissioners? Not right at this time. Okay. We've heard from the uh, legal counsels representing the various entities. Uh, just for the public's uh, consumption, I would like to um, point out that the law regarding this type of an annexation does not provide for any involvement or public comment regarding the petition. However, I do see a large number of people here, and we have heard from a large number of you. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes, excuse me, Jerry? Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, Jerry suggested that perhaps uh, we would recognize um, Mayor Strauss or, and or um, any of the township trustees who might wish to make a statement. <coughs> Trustee Rita Canfield? Does she need, does it need to be sworn in, Jerry? Good morning, Rita. Good morning. My name is Rita Canfield. My address is 461 Stallion Court. I'm a trustee for LaGrange Township. This annexation proceeding has been very disruptive to our entire community, both the village and the township. And I'd like to bring out just a couple concerns that we do have with this as residents as well as elected officials. Primarily, this is a section of property that is located in Lower Coast service area in their facility planning area. The viability of LORCO as an organization has often been called into question. <coughs> Undermining their authority and their ability to provide service at this point could present problems for the rest of the members of LORCO as well as the village of LaGrange and LaGrange Township. The roadway issues and the maintenance, therefore, of Route 301, which is a state highway, and Biggs Road, which is a township road, have clearly not been completely resolved and are yet open for discussion. Depending on where the sewers are installed, where the lines themselves are run, which we've seen no plans for yet, that could create a burden for some of the other residents who have not asked for annexation, and we'd like to have that as, as part of our thought processes when we do this is this good public planning for the other residents as well as those who are currently asking for annexation? How are their rights and considerations being evaluated? The promise of service to areas has often been given by annexing municipalities. However, the ability for them to come through with those promises has often been lacking, and I would not like that to happen in this instance here. The township and the village have both spent a great deal of money and time on both a land use survey and a land use plan. In our land use survey, we were clearly given numbers, and we have the records to prove that, that high density or even medium density was not something that our residents, both of the village and the township, were very much in favor of. They were very concerned about that. We've tried to create a land use plan that reflected those values. That clearly has not been addressed in this issue. We do have high density zoning, and we still have areas in that high density area that can be built on. Pheasant Run is currently high density, and while this proposed annexation will not be high density, it is more of a medium density area, it does not comply with our current land use plan <coughs> for that area. We have a current resolution pending for public discussion to have medium density, that lot size will be 150 as it is proposed by 225. This attempt to circumvent township zoning is motivated by monetary gain and not good community planning. The township is still willing to work with this developer, as with every other developer, to try to ensure that growth is managed not only for the township but also for the village. We, as the township, currently provide not only fire and EMS protection, we have LORCO to provide sewers, we have Lorraine County Rural Water who provides water service to this area, and we also have the Lorraine County Sheriff's Department to provide other types of needed assistance. There's nothing that the village is asking for that's not already being provided. We're asking the county commissioners to allow township zoning 
and township planning to continue. We have served this area very well for a number of years. We ask for the right for that to continue. We also ask that for a full consideration and your opposition to this proposed annexation. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Mayor Strauss. Commissioners, uh, my name is Kim Strauss. I am mayor for the village of LaGrange. Um, I do agree and disagree with some of these issues. Um, the one that offends me the most is normally when a township tries to say that we are once again taking their property. Uh, we have discussed this on council. We have had meetings with our trustees. We have agreements in place and projects going on that are basically unheard of in any other village township um, relationship. We had already agreed to serve this property in the township, which is also something that you don't hear very often. We did not want to take this property. But on the same hand, these people have come to the village and they have asked us to join our village. And there are numerous reasons. Yes, some of them for monetary gain with a developer who needs a specified lot size. I've heard that some of them want police protection. I've heard that some of them are tired of their septic systems and want our sewer system. So as a council and mayor, our decision was, you know, we are not taking property, but if 100% of these people would like to join our village, I believe that we should allow them if we can handle them and our services can handle them. I've heard many comments that our, that our sewer system can handle it and uh, Mr. Phillips has given you some information that was very, very minimally correct. As far as the 208 planning area, yes, absolutely, it is in Lorco's district, which I think people need to understand is controlled by Lorco and the county. When that property is annexed, at that time we will sit down with Lorco. And, and the bottom line here is if Lorco can serve that property more efficiently than we can, that property will go to Lorco. But if the political subdivisions are doing their job that are involved with this piece of property, if the village of LaGrange can serve that property the cheapest and most efficient way, then that property should also be turned over to the village. And we understand that as a village, and I have had discussions with Jim McConnell from Lorco, and he understands that also, because as political activists, whatever you want to call all these different groups, the bottom line is, the resident is the one that we are supposed to take care of, that we are supposed to think of, and I guarantee you that the village will do that when we sit down with Lorco, and if we can't work out a deal with Lorco, then we will go in front of NOACA, and I would hope that NOACA will make that decision based on what is best for those residents. And that is what the village of LaGrange will do also. So. And, and, and I've also been told that this is a very mute point until the annexation goes through or doesn't go through. Um, can we provide services? Yes. I could provide you with lots of numbers and statistics that would probably bore you to death the same way it bores me, but I can guarantee you that we have plenty of capacity. We are even in discussions with LORCO because they would like to use some of our capacity. So I hope that if, when the commissioners look at this situation, that they look at what we have tried to do in LaGrange, that we tried to service this within the township. We did not force this annexation. And to be quite honest with you, and we have talked to this issue on council many times, when this property enters the village, we have to plow the streets, we have to fix the water lines, we have to fix the sewer lines. If we could have left this in the township and collected sewers, we'd have done nothing but sit back and got a check every month and watch the township fix everything. So to think that we really want to take this property is almost fiscally irresponsible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Strauss, for your <clears throat> attendance and your comments. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board this morning regarding this matter? Commissioners, you have comments? Um, yes. My job as a county commissioner is to represent the people. Obviously, by all these messages and all these emails, it's apparent that the township people do not want this annexation. I think one of two things are going to happen if we deny this annexation. 
the petitioners are going to come back with all their I's dotted and their T's crossed, or it's going to go to a lawsuit. So my job, what I would hope would happen if, if this gets denied today, because it's my job, I'm going to vote no, that the township and the developers sit down and come to some type of compromise before either, you know, the petitioners come back with, with a new petition or it goes to a lawsuit. Um, so today I will do my job and represent you and vote no. And if it goes to court, then the prosecutors will have to do their job and figure out what the law, if the law is uh, for or against you. Commissioner Kahlo. <coughs> Again, doing our job as a commissioner, uh, I've been in contact with Andy Vidra from Nowaka. He had no concerns over sewer issues being at Lorca or LaGrange, LaGrange Village. Uh, I understand Mr. Phillips' point, heard Mr. Blevins, uh, but per the law and speaking to our attorneys, it is landowners wanting to be annexed into the village, and that's what we're here to vote on. So after comments, I would like to make a motion to approve the annexation. Um, I don't know who to direct my question to, but uh, I appreciated the comments of both uh, Trustee Canfield and Mayor Strauss. I wonder if there would be an opportunity for um, the parties involved, including the uh, petitioner, to go back and to look at the prior agreement that had been worked out and to see if we couldn't rework that agreement so that the property could receive the service from the city, as the mayor mentioned, and the land could still stay in the township. Is there any opportunity for the commissioners to um, encourage that action to occur? Paul, would you come to the microphone? I'm realizing while you're walking there, I know that there was a lot of time and effort that went into that. Yes, and, and your comments are appreciated, and that is why uh, Mr. Tipple, who is the president of Maranatha Custom Homes, went through the past year and a half trying to work out uh, some sort of resolution with the, town, with the township, which could benefit both sides. Uh, the, the trustees, in fact, passed a uh, zoning ordinance that would have worked, but then it was shot down uh, by a referendum. So there is no zoning category with, with the density that would allow him to move forward with his development. He owns the property now and has, and has been holding that property for a significant period of time. Um, if, if the question is, will, can, will the petition be withdrawn today? Uh, I can't, no, it will not be withdrawn today. We will continue to work with the township and the village, uh, as has always been the case. This has not been as adversarial as it might appear to uh, today. Uh, there are a lot of people in the township who, who, who support it. Uh, actually, all of the eight members of the petition group are member are, are township uh, uh, residents. So I, I'm sorry, I can't say that we, we, we will not withdraw the petition day. We, we'd like to have a vote on it. Uh, we will continue to work in good faith with all parties involved. It's just that, that uh, each of these uh, petitioners has their reasons for moving forward. And uh, at least with regards to Mr. Tipple, who your question was addressed to, uh, he, he just can't continue to hold this property for months and months without moving it forward. So, And, and I appreciate that. I guess that perhaps uh, if the, um, the residents of LaGrange Township uh, um, became aware of what the opportunities for this property would be, uh, maybe they might think twice about the action they took last year and uh, be more open-minded. I, I, I agree with you, uh, and this, that was what that was what was said at the time that the, that zoning was uh, or the when the ballot went to, when the thing went to the ballot was that this this will be one of the things that we'll have to proceed uh, proceed. But as I said, we're too far down this road. Uh, obviously, Mr. Tipple would have, would have would have loved to have had all that going in place last November and started construction. But now here we are, almost five six months down the road. Uh, he just can't continue on the if come because we I mean. I think that things would change, but we can't. We don't know for sure, and we cannot risk this business uh, for another six months of holding this property. So and I appreciate my, that. My Thank apologies, <coughs> Jerry. The the voters by about 75 percent voted down that proposal for high density. The residents have worked with the the, the trustees and have proposed 
numerous revisions between what that res the, the zoning which was defeated and, and other proposals so there's been compromise in the sense of of of, of changing the zoning uh, and submitted by the residents somewhere between what the developer wanted and what's existing so any indication that that there's been no cooperation on behalf of the residents is entirely false completely completely and that's not wrong my intention. And, and 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 the residents are more than willing to work uh, with the trustees and the village to try to get to a resolution so I mean there's no unwillingness on behalf of, of uh, the residents and and, and, and and the commissioners know maybe not this body but you know I was here last year in connection with an issue involving uh, East River Road and Chestnut Ridge Road where we worked out a, a, a reasonable solution to a problem and I always advise my clients to pursue that and we're more than willing to do that with all with all parties so whatever the commissioners decide if they do reject it we'll, we'll be at the table in the interim until they come back and we'll be working on a solution and, and if it does come back maybe in the interim we'll work out a deal and hammer out a deal and it'll make it a moot issue so we are going to continue to, to to try to reach a solution uh, because it's an all or nothing and, and to compromise and get something in the middle is better than run the risk and roll the dice and come up with nothing I so. like the word compromise thank you and I didn't mean to suggest that you know we're, we've kind of been inserted in this process which has been a year year and a half long process we've kind of been inserted after the fact and then oh by the way we have to make a decision and that's our job but um, I wasn't suggesting that the commissioners it was just responding to mr. Blevins comments that that seemed to indicate that the residents didn't come up with a counter proposal and I just wanted to make the record straight that that was incorrect that there have been many times and I've been at many trustees meetings and we've offered solutions okay to the proposal which would would be somewhere in the middle which would give them more units but at the same time provide some safeguards for the for the community so we will continue that discussion so it wasn't any suggestions of the commissioners I was responding to Mr. Blevins comments thank you Jerry Mr. Ennis? Uh, just a few comments, commissioners. Um, certainly we've heard some comments about whether this is good or bad. I need to remind you that this is not a matter in which you decide what is good or bad for the village, the township, or the residents. It's purely a procedural matter in which you have to look through the seven factors in 709023E and decide whether or not those factors have been met. If you decide to approve the annexation, you need to pass a resolution that says, we find that each of those seven conditions have been met. If you pass a resolution to deny the annexation, your resolution must specify exactly which of those seven conditions you feel has not been met. That's procedurally what you have to do. Um, you know, as we've heard several times, this is a brand new law, uh, and unfortunately uh, that, that creates some problems. Normally when there are these kinds of issues and lawyers bring issues to you, we look to case laws, decisions by the court to help us decide the interpretation of these laws. Um, there are no cases out there, so you know, this is, most of these issues are all issues of what we call first impression. So. We have to call the shot without any direction or help from any other court. Um, it may be that whichever way we go, this goes to court and we will get some direction. And, and although I usually don't like lawsuits, sometimes they're helpful. In any event, what you have heard is you have heard uh, Mr. Blevins uh, opinions on what he believes the law is and I don't find anything terribly unreasonable about what Mr. Blevins has presented. You have heard Mr. Phillips' presentation of what he believes the law to be, and I don't find anything terribly unreasonable about what he has presented. Um, I have uh, met with each of the commissioners, discussed the law. I've given you my opinion on some of these things. What I have given you is based on numerous uh, seminars that I went to when uh, these laws were being proposed. Um, I spoke with people who were drafting the law, legislatures as to what they intended the law to be. 
and uh, the remarks that I have given you is based on those. That doesn't make me any of those are right either until the court says they are right. Um, uh, I'm prepared to be more specific if, if the commissioners need to any further comments, but we've already gone over these up and down several times. But that's kind of where we are um, uh, at this point with regarding this, this petition. But again, if you make a motion to pass it, you must, that, most mo that motion must say we find all seven conditions to be met. If you pass a motion and deny the annexation, you must specify which of those seven conditions that you feel has not been met. Well, I would like to make a motion that all seven conditions have been met and ask for passage of the annexation. If there's no second, it's died due to a lack of a second. If there's no second, it's died due to a lack of a second. I make a motion to deny the annexation, and I don't have the numbers uh, of one through seven of which we can deny it. Would it be number five or seven? Number seven is to create a road maintenance problem. Um, the fact that it was a couple days late, I'm not sure where that is on here. Probably six. Number six, because it says F <laughs> instead of six. Uh, for those reasons, uh, I, I move. you would also include, if any there. place that fits, it would be number one. So that's the petition one, meets. One, six, seven. I'm sorry? I would suggest if that's your reasoning, you go with one, six, and seven. I will go with one, six, and seven. Thank you, Jerry. And um, as you stated, maybe we need to have some case law on this in the future. And I think regardless of which way we go with this, it's going to end up in a lawsuit. So I would like to uh, make the motion to deny the annexation. I'll second. Any further discussion? Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? No. Motion carried. motion carried. Thank you for your attendance and comments this morning. Stay tuned. We have several annexations forthcoming. <laughs> <laughs> the next issue is a decision on an expedited two, which was no. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm I am member to excuse me. Decision on a municipal owned land annexation petition of 155.289 acres from Wellington Township to the village of Wellington. Uh, shall I read the, what Teresa has put together, the synopsis? Or? Just recognize Mr. Bond? Yeah, why don't you recognize Okay, Stephen Bond is the attorney representing, or the agent representing the village of Wellington. Mr. Bond, good morning. Good morning. I intend to be brief and hopefully not controversial. Hooray! Uh, this application is in the same area as uh, They one can't hear you very well in the back, Steve. This, this application is in the same area as one that we brought to you earlier, but it's a, a substantially reduced territory, and it's the two parcels that are the easternmost that are actually already owned by the village. The ones that, as I was hearing the comments the last time, everyone seemed to agree, well, of course, if we already own it, why shouldn't those come in? Well, those are the ones that we're here for today. It's only 155 acres. This is also under the new statute, and uh, as we read the statute, which is 709.16 paragraph B, it says, if the only territory to be annexed is contiguous territory owned by a municipal corporation, the Board of County Commissioners by resolution shall grant the annexation, period. Nothing about any of the other issues that are related to any of the other kinds of annexations. You have a letter, I believe, in your file from uh, the engineer's office on uh, dated March 9th saying that the parcels proposed to be annexed are adjacent and contiguous to the village. And you have a letter of March 21st from 
the engineer's office saying that the description does follow the map and both correctly describe the area of land proposed to be annexed. Uh, so as we read the statute, we think we have complied with the only issues that there are. Now, the last time there was a question about the road maintenance. As we read the statute, the road maintenance is not an issue for this type of annexation. Nevertheless, we have already approved the road maintenance agreement. It has been adopted by an ordinance of our council. It's been signed by our administrator. It's been submitted to Mr. Ennis. I've talked to Mr. Ennis as far as I am aware. He is in agreement with the text. So we have no problem in entering into that agreement in order to have that issue not be an issue as well. Uh, so based on that, we would respectfully ask that these two parcels be brought into the village of Wellington. Okay, and are these parcels one and two that are shown on the map? Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ennis? Uh, the statements made by Mr. Bond are correct. Commissioners, he has submitted, uh, again, even though he may not have been required to, did submit a maintenance agreement that I have looked over and reviewed. I have sent that to the, the original has gone to the engineer's office for their signature and will be coming back to the commissioners. But I have reviewed that and approved it. Um, and upon meeting the conditions that the land is contiguous and the engineer has indicated we have an accurate map and accurate legal description, uh, it is my opinion that the commissioners are required by law to approve this annexation. I like the use of the word shall. Is there anyone in the audience who has any comment on this proposed annexation? If not, I, commissioners, questions, comments? Uh, since it's been pointed out to us by most, both Mr. Bond and Mr. Innes that the Ohio Revised Code says shall because it's territory already owned by the municipality, I move that we approve the annexation as outlined. Second. Any further discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The next one's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> it get easy. It's getting easier and easier. We like that. <laughs> Just wanted to mention for the record, and we probably want to put it in our journal entry, Teresa, this is another one of those situations in which the, t the property is not excluded from the township. It remains in both jurisdictions. Part of the township and the village. Uh, since Teresa had a little trouble researching this, probably uh, making those indications that are important, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for all the work you did on that, too. Sure. Okay. Item number three, Teresa. Just you're going to receive and journalize a regular <laughs> annexation petition of 13.48 acres from New Russia Township to the City of Oberlin. Attorney James Taylor is the agent. This hearing has been scheduled for Thursday, June 9, 2005 at 10.15 a.m. Thank you. Now we want to revert no, to I we need to need oh, receive file. Need to oh, I thought we <coughs> were just going to receive it. Also move. Sorry. Second. Any further discussion? Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kikowski. Aye. Thank you. I saw that with <laughs> um, Teresa wants us to revert to item number 17 since Mayor Smith's been waiting for a long time to tell about this fantastic community. So, Kelly Glenn. Good morning. Um, I'm Kelly Glenn, Assistant Director for Lorain County Community Development Department. This is Carol Sales Agency, Inc. Carol Manufacturing Sales U.S. Net Supply um, are requiring property located at 35179 Avon Comhurst Parkway in Avon. The property is being, um, the company is going to construct a $70,000 square foot building and move their plant from Westlake, Ohio to Avon, Ohio. They will be making a minimum investment of $4,750,000 and a maximum investment of $11,500. No, $11 million. $11 million, I'm sorry. $500,000. <laughs> All those zeros. Um, the company will, will be retaining 43 full-time employees and creating um, 25 new full-time permanent jobs. And I will um, revert to Mayor Smith to, for further comments regarding this project. Thank you, Kelly. Good morning, Mayor Smith. Good morning. Uh, they, they're coming to the city of Avon, of course, in Westlake, and, and they are going to create 25 new jobs in the county over the next three years. It's a very aggressive growth plan. They, uh, they're committed to hiring Lorain County people. 
as many as they possibly can to fill these positions. <coughs> they, uh, they are presently going to build 70,000 square feet, and their anticipation is in the next couple of years to uh, add more square footage, more jobs. And I think this is a real plus. They make one of the, the past two companies that we have, one is completing their building right now, makes soup. They make packaging for the food industry. This is kind of a little bit of a diversion from our, you know, auto industry. It, it's, it's nice to have companies of other different types of businesses to, so that we can cushion the blow between the auto industry and others. They make, it's kind of funny, they make nettings for turkeys and hams. Every time you got a turkey or a ham with a net on it, they make it. They make packaging for uh, Oklahoma Steak and a lot of other different companies. So they're kind of recession proof to a point. So we're really looking forward to having them come to the city of Avon. And I know you see these numbers here, 4.7 million to 11 million, and you wonder why there's such a you know, wide gap. Is That's the way the forms are now in the state of Ohio. They say, well, what do you think your minimum is? What do you think your maximum will be? And they tell you to be, be conservative on both ends. So you get, such, you get a wide range of what the costs are. Uh, you know, we, we talk about we talk about abatement. Mr. Carroll could have probably went to about 40 some other states and got a better offer. In fact, he got offers from a lot of other states. It's it's kind of like the common thread of all the companies that we have in in Lorain County that are staying here in our county. The reason why they're here is because they're they're family owned. They have family in the area, and it's an emotional attachment. We try to give some abatement to help them out. And if you look at our abatement, we went from 75% down to, down to, I think it was like 55%. And the reason why is we like to front load so they can realize the best possible usage of their money to add more employees. So that's why we start at the top and work our way down, because they need that money up front. And uh, uh, Mr. Carroll is here. It's, it's a great company. Like I say, family-owned company. And uh, these are the ones that in Avon, we have a lot of companies we put in over the past few years. The common thread is they're all family owned. The common thread is they want to stay by their families, but we also have to give them some incentive to stay here. Even with our incentives, there's other states that they can do business cheaper, but being that they're emotionally attached to the area, this is what's holding them here. And we, we've got to put our best foot forward to hold these companies and for them to expand because they're expanding in a different type of industry that is, is going to be recession proof for, for the employees. And uh, we already have Avon people and uh, some other people in the county in Sheffield that work for their company. Uh, I've talked to these people. They're very happy with their bosses. Their bosses work right with them. This isn't a point where somebody's setting up in an office up here and doesn't see anybody. They work right with their people. They're, his desk is right with everybody else's desk. When you walk into their office, everybody is working in one area, and it's a very casual work atmosphere, and I think that this is the type of companies that we try to push to maintain our job growth in Lorain County. And uh, if you have any other questions, I'll answer them. Chris Carroll is here, the owner of the company. So. Questions, commissioners? Well, I think God, regardless of how big or small, we need to roll out the red carpet for any company that wants to, to locate to Lorain County. Um, my one question would be the school board has already yes. been notified and is on board with this. Yes. It's like everything else. I think a lot of people realize that tax abatement is is so-called dirty word. Reality is that we have to do something. Uh, the piece of property that they're going on probably gives us right now maybe $1,000 a year in open tax for property. When they're all done, even with tax abatement, are going to be hundreds of times more than that. And plus bringing the jobs in. You know, we need employment. Absolutely. You know, we need employment. Uh, small companies, what's great about small companies is if one leaves you, you don't die. You know, um, I always get worried. Manco has become so big, which is a great thing. You know, it's a great thing. But when they end up being 12 to 13 to 15 percent of your income, you start to worry like Ford and U.S. Steel and the rest of them. We cringe every time one of those people say, we might leave. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all puckering up when it comes to that. Well, you got smaller companies. You're, you know, you don't want to see anybody leave, but the smaller companies are the ones that are going to make your good, your good base so that you can have good income, good jobs for people, and that it's not going to break a city's back or the county's back when they leave, if they would leave. You know, they, they've already committed. They bought twice as much property as what they need. They've committed to be here in, in the city of Avon and Loring County, and I think this is, these are the companies that we have got to do everything we possibly can. 
The theory was before we'd only give abatement to big companies. We found out that's not perfect. What we need now is just to build a heck of a base with the companies we do have, the small companies, fast growth. How many people are going to build 70% growth in the next three years? How many companies do we know they're going to do 70% growth in three years? And that's a conservative estimate. So. Does Mr. Great. Carroll want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you have family in the area. Yeah. Uh, my second question, have you util are thinking about utilizing the Port Authority in, uh, to finance this project at all? Uh, I've made Chris aware of the different uh, agencies. They've been down to stay for tax credits and a few other issues, but they, I've made them aware of the, the county and uh, the ability to m maybe get some money on a, a very uh, positive for them, and we, I do for everybody. I hand them a, with the phone calls, and I introduce them and, and let them. I don't want to be a middleman. I just <laughs> give them the phone calls and let them talk to the people who are necessary to make the things happen. Because that's another avenue to help yes. help a company locate to our area. So keep that in mind. And next Thanksgiving, when you uh, pull that turkey out of the <laughs> we'll thing, think of you. it's theirs. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just come to your house for dinner. <laughs> I'm usually out of state on Thanksgiving. Oh, but anyway, well. I'll leave something there for you. Okay. I'll move for approval of the uh, tax abatement as outlined. Second. Any further discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank I hope you have Carol. a couple more for you within the next six I months. I hope so, too. Thank you. Thank you. Job and Family Services bills. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Investments? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Palo? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Appropriations? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Palo? Aye. Transfers? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Palo? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Advances and repayments? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Palo? Aye. Requisitions? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Travel expenses? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Authorize various personnel actions as indicated. <laughs> Oh, we haven't heard from you today. <laughs> You're awfully nice quiet. Morning. Been a nice morning. Uh -huh. You get to do all the hard stuff. I get to do all the fun stuff. Good. Okay. Uh, I would like to request an executive session at the conclusion of our regular board business. I have uh, uh, two or three new hires to discuss. Uh, I have a couple issues of uh, pending uh, labor relations to discuss and a uh, potential matter of litigation and the purchase of a property. So we have a... Uh, a little bit of an agenda, and all these subjects are permissible under the Sunshine Law. Uh, so uh, we'll need that at the conclusion of our regular business. Thanks. Authorize the release of retainage to SA Communal Company, Inc., Bar Barberton, Ohio, in the amount of $24,488 plus interest as final payment for work performed in the Lorain County Justice Center. All the necessary paperwork has been received. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Amend resolution number 05-194 adopted March 3rd, 2005, authorizing the release and retainage to Cone, Inc., Brexville, Ohio, for the work performed on Lorain County Justice Center. The amendment is to reflect the retainage is to be $53,303.04 plus interest as final payment, not $49,466.04. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Amend resolution number 05-40, adopted January 13th, and resolution 05-110, adopted February 3rd, authorizing the appointments of the APR inspectors for the year 2005. The amendment is to reflect the total appropriation for both APR inspectors for the year 2005 will be 3400 with compensation established at 960 per hour, with mileage reimbursement is 0.40.5 cents per mile. So moved. Second. Discussion. We had uh, had two instances with the apiaries, and what's the change on this? <clears throat> it was a housekeeping resolution here, Commissioner. Uh, the way the, the last resolution was structured, it appeared to give a 
doubling of $3,400 when, in fact, it was supposed to be 34 inclusive. Uh, so that there was no confusion at a later date. We just wanted clarification and resolution of what the intent of the board at that time was. Okay, thank you. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under Children and Families Council, authorized Director Lorraine County Children and Families Council to enter into a vendor agreement with the J.C. Penny Company to purchase merchandise card for bedding materials. This is for TANF eligible children, birth to three, enrolled in the Help Me Grow program and their eligible siblings from age four through 17 in accordance with the terms of the county's contract with Department of Job and Family Services, which was executed November 18, 2004 in the sum not to exceed 50,000 from account 8220108014901301 and also 430101 and 490101. So moved. Uh, I have a question. Jim, I'm sorry. I, when I had you in the office the other day, I wanted to ask you about this also. I think it was North Coast Bedding also submitted uh, a bid on this, and I'd, I'd really like to see us use local companies if possible. Are we going to be able to do anything with that? You know, uh, I'm 100% with you, Commissioner. I, I really like to see this stuff stay to our locals, especially the small business folks. Uh, we've been very successful at that over the years. Uh, the North Coast, uh, we had originally uh, seal bid this. This, uh, and this was the third time uh, that we went out. We weren't getting aggressive quotes. We had some uh, bid defects. And over the holidays, nobody bid, period. North Coast uh, came in a little bit late uh, with their bid, and they actually missed it by 11 minutes looking for a parking oh. space, no right. less. Uh, <laughs> Go figure. I spoke to right. the owner about it. Uh, so their, their bid was not able to be received. I, I did have uh, considerable dialogue. Just to let you know, you don't have to accept the bids. I mean, you can reject the bids, go out again. You only had one bid. You could find that a reason to go out again. I, I did ask Mr. Crespo to go out and meet with North Coast Betting in an attempt to, you know, try to get something set locally. Uh, and I, I think that he may be prepared to dialogue on that a bit this morning. But, but obviously, this is a good amount of money that, that would churn in this community. Mm -hmm. We can find a way of, of spending it here. Uh, but I have to defer to Mr. Crespo at this point. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, morning, morning Juan. Juan Molina Crespo, Executive Director of the Lorraine County Children and Families Council. Uh, Mr. Cor Mr. Cortez is correct, uh, Commissioner. Uh, I did meet uh, with the uh, principal at North Coast Betting, uh, and we spent um, oh, an hour or so together uh, with respect to his uh, bid. Uh, as it turned out, uh, a recommendation that I had made uh, after viewing his, uh, uh, his capacity to be able to provide uh, the materials as, as were specified in the contract with uh, Lorraine County and Job and Family Services and how the specifications were indeed identified in our bid package, uh, there were some, some uh, concerns that I had and I had, I had uh, made Mr. Cortez aware of those concerns. Um, uh, so, Although I agree, I think that Lorraine County vendors indeed need to be our first priority in terms of being able to uh, involve them in, in these kinds of matters. Uh, given the limitations that we had with respect to the three previous uh, uh, postings of the bid, the lack of participation other than uh, uh, from uh, J.C. Penney and of course from ultimately from North Coast Betting, after reviewing all of that, it was my recommendation that we went uh, with J.C. Penney's uh, uh, Commissioner, just, just as additional information, uh, these are funds that need to be encumbered through the purchase of merchandise cards uh, by June 30th. Uh, and as, you, as you're aware, we've been trying to get, get there um, since um, October or, no, or November. So we're concerned about having those funds being sent back to the state without utilizing them for the, uh, for the folks that are enrolled, the participants in the Help Me Grow program. So that was another issue that, you know, that I felt was extremely important and we needed to move uh, rather quickly uh, given, given what, was faced, uh, what we were faced with. What would be the time frame if we rebid this out? Could June 30th, is it feasible to have the items purchased by then? The, uh, my understanding is, is that as long as we, if we were to go through the same uh, procedure, 
uh, or the same model that we currently have, that you currently have before you in terms of the purchase of the merchandise cards, that would be fine as long as we purchase those cards. We don't necessarily need to expend those cards by June 30th. However, should we bid this out again, um, I would say cons uh, the best case scenario, Commissioner, you're probably looking at five to six weeks before I come before you again uh, requesting authorization uh, of, or a resolution to enter into a contract. So that would put us, that would put us around mid-May. So that's uh, plenty of time. Uh, we can certainly, uh, if, that's, if that's your desire, we can certainly try to do that, absolutely. And your concerns, the concerns My you had were just like, Furniture not matching or something in my recollection? Well, there were, I think there were, there were some issues regarding the specifications uh, from North Coast Bedding. I was not aware until I did the visit that there would be mixed match sets of the, uh, of the uh, box spring and mattress uh, that uh, North Coast would be providing. Uh, the gentleman also indicated that there was a possibility that there would be a price increase which would then be passed on to him. Uh, which again, and g given that we would then have a set price on that merchandise, he could not pass that cost increase on to uh, the county board. But he was okay with that? Uh, Commissioner, I didn't really get into details uh, with him on, on that issue. Uh, the, uh, the other concer concern was the concern of, uh, of the cribs. Uh, North Coast Bedding was not able to provide cribs nor crib mattresses. They would have to go to a third source in order to provide that for the participants in the program. Uh, so that also then you're talking about a sub-contract between North Coast Bedding and who, whatever vendor uh, they would use in order to provide cribs when the need for cribs became, uh, uh, became needed. Additionally, uh, we talk about linen. Uh, bumper guards, mattress pads, and things of that nature. Uh, uh, in addition, uh, North Coast Bedding would not be able to provide those things as well, which means a third party would also have to be subcontracted in order to receive uh, payment through the TANF dollars. So those were some of the um, major problems that I, that I thought uh, were reflected in, in, uh, in the bid with North Coast. Okay, thank you. I think... Uh I think if we aggressively pursue it, if, if it's the board's desire to rebid, I think we can get it done in about three weeks. I would say since we've only had one bid, you know, it would be it, enough to justify rebidding it. Th well, you, in your bid packages, uh, just for, for our own d development together, uh, you can reject a bid package for any or no reason whatsoever. We reserve the right to do that in the bid <coughs> package, so it's already stated in there. Uh, but it is very difficult to competitively review something when you only have one. This has been a, a weird situation, <coughs> excuse me, from the very beginning. I've worked with one. The first time we received a, a bifurcated bid from Sears that really wasn't much of a bid. I, I believe it was Target. It. Target. Uh, then we tried to go out uh, over the holidays and we received no bids. And then we went back out at the beginning of the year and we received one bid from pennies. Uh, while the bid is able to be accepted, there was some <coughs> minor issues with that bid as uh, how they were going to do some things, but it was within the parameters of acceptability. Uh, the, the, uh, but I think that if we're aggressive, we could probably be back in three, maybe four weeks. We, we need the bid for two weekends. Uh, well, we bid bid for two weekends, gave them a week, so you're looking at probably three board meetings from that, right? No later than four, yeah. Depending okay. on when they get it in the paper and the date they pick. Yeah, T Teresa does all the posting, so she's a little bit more savvy on this than I am, but so I mean, that was desired. But I know Mr. Crespo has worked hard on this. Um, our only concern that he and I have both shared is that we don't return these dollars back to the state and don't procure materials uh, here. Um, after account. this money is spent, uh, spent by June 30th, is mm -hmm. there another fifty thousand dollars available for the next year? Depends on what they program. That's correct. This this is an, an additional TANF award. Uh, it, it is not inclusive of the uh, the norm sort of the normal TANF award that we get through Help Me Grow. So this is in addition to the Help Me Grow uh, program that we have. 
But Commissioner, I, I don't I don't know the answer to that uh, yeah. as to whether or not it would be available again. It was almost like the uh, the uh, pension team pregnancy funds we had a couple years ago. You know, when we finally got geared up and were able to effectively utilize the dollars, they dried up and disappeared. So, That's right. uh, it, it, you know, it's it's hit or miss depending on uh, what monies are available through the state for to go uh, Department of Job Family Services. But it, again, I think I think it would be it, it'd be stretching it, but it's but it's doable. Either either scenario, whatever pleases the board, I think uh, can be accomplished. We're, we're just going to have to roll up our sleeves one, and and if the board so desires, we, we can go back. Whatever well, the pleasure of the board is. Well, I've got a question on it, Jim. Do we have a plan to notify the small businesses other than when we approve the advertising? It's one paper or the other. If you don't happen to see that, I mean, do we, we have a plan in Lorain County to get to the small businesses you know, he, so they have the opportunity to bid these? Yeah, that's a very good question, Commissioner, and I'm going to give you a very poor answer. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes or no? Yeah. <laughs> Government at work. Well, it's, it's a no with, 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 a, with, a, with a reason. And, and we don't maintain bid lists because if you miss somebody or somebody wasn't on or they weren't notified, uh, then you have an official defect. We do try to alert the local community unofficially to what's going on and, and through word of mouth and encouragement. And if we know of several businesses, we do try to make contact. But if you maintain official list, it gets into a whole other area of potential defects and uh, potential litigation that, that we, we've tried to stay out of. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to see more and more of our, our materials posted on the Internet. <coughs> I, I want to make our Internet site a gateway to the community. Uh, other people have been successful with that. We're working on it. Our hands have been a bit tied with our resources, but we're getting better. Uh, I envision by mid to late year having, you know, all of this stuff on the Internet. I want to be doing reverse bidding, and I want to be doing uh, our auctions on the Internet. Ms. Newton and I have talked uh, very much about those issues. and. We're getting aggressive with that, uh, so it, it, it will get better. But I'm sorry I have such a long commentary, but the answer right now is no, and I think there's a, there's a, a very good reason why we don't. Don't like the answer, but. <laughs> I didn't think you would. Can I just state something? If, if you give direction to advertise today, we could possibly go to the papers, the two consecutive Mondays, which would be the 4th, the 11th, open the 18th, which could give us possibly time to put it on the 21st agenda. I would make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Sorry for that one. Thank make you. you work even harder. That's okay. It's my pleasure. Ms. Kikowski. <laughs> Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. So then you'll mind you'll get with me in the thing and everything. Thank you. All right. Let's, uh, we're going to go back again. Let's all of us huddle and, and look at setting that bid up, okay? I think there's a couple things we, other things we could have did with it to make our life a little bit easier, too. Uh, if we do it one or two more times, we'll, we'll have a great one. I mean, <laughs> we've we changed it every time. Do you want to just go in one paper? you want me to do two papers? Do you want me to do, I mean, I can, whatever the pleasure of the board is. I would like to go in two papers. Can we do Chronicle and Journal? The, uh, What's the cost of advertising one? Is that out of your budget? Thank you, Commissioner. We've already incurred about $1,100 in advertising costs that I have no uh, guarantee that I'm going to be let me help you. We, we just gave you a $28,000 advance today, so. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. You're covered. Right, there you go. All right, I, I, will, uh, I will take care of the rest. Uh, if, uh, yeah, I, we'll, I'll be able to take care of that. Commissioners, the prior board had developed a posture of only utilizing one local no uh, newspaper, and we took turns back and forth to eliminate some of the cost uh, and over uh, duplication, excuse me, of resources. So I don't know whose turn it is. We don't really, you know, I don't really want to know. But if you want to advertise in both papers, do you want to continue that posture, just make an exception? I think you heard this? Commissioner Kukowski say this time, and we're not talking right. about right, an overall about change of policy. That's that why I asked. Clarification. Okay, and I want to suggest that a little 37 cent stamp you send it to somebody, and, and I, I listen to what you said, but you know, a little notice that says somebody, we're bidding this project. If you're interested, contact this person for bid specs. I don't think that, uh, it, I just what, don't think that that. Uh, and if you weren't the business that got the 37 cent stamp and you found out that somebody else got it, how would you feel? I don't care how you feel. It doesn't uh, uh, bring any responsibility against us for the notification. That I just lost my point. I don't wish to discuss it any further. I made can a point. We, Jim, well, can we also work on posting it like on LorraineCounty.com, the public 
websites so we have anybody capable of that so they know that we have bids out? What I usually we just want to interrupt a little bit. Sure, Yvonne. Just especially with job and family service, we're good at this. We will send, go through the newspaper, I mean, go through the yellow pages, and we will send a fax over a notice of what's being bidded out to those local companies. So we do oh, okay, put good. that step in there. So like if in Juan's case, what I would do is look through our, no, our local, you know, the telephone book, pick out some of those vendors, call them up, get their fax number, and we will fax over the notice. That way it takes care. We're not sending anything out right. postage. We're faxing it over. They have the notice there, and it's up to them then after that to come in and, and pick we, up And we have no official list. Exactly. <laughs> Well, I think what happens. So that's in, what we usually do. What happens in government, though, is when you fax or call these small business people, it's sort of like it's government. It's an ominous process. I think maybe we ought to start something to help small business learn how to get into it. Through, We've done that too in the past yeah, we, too. Yeah, okay. we. Well, maybe just step that up a bit so yeah. Yeah. we get more participation. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're having a uh, prevailing wage yeah, seminar yeah. coming up uh, at the board and uh, the prosecutor's office discussed, and we're going to be presenting <laughs> stuff. Maybe time that we have another seminar on yeah. accessing uh, uh, various uh, vendor relationships with the county, and we can we can We've work on that doing too. that. So we'll do another I think one. We only we send out like over 200 something letters, and we probably got like two or three people to show up in conjunction with community development last year. Well, maybe we'll, we'll, so, let's get together. Let's work okay. on it again. Even if it's an annual event, and only a few people show up. And, and maybe we can do something with that through the community alliance at their summit. Uh, maybe a lot of people showing up. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we'll see how well the prevailing wage one goes over, and we may be able to offer more. Okay. So I go back to number 16. Um, your motion died due to a lack of seconds since we did something else. So, okay. Under Thank Community you. Development Department. Oh, I'm sorry. We were we're down to 18. Emergency we're moving management. Right along. Award bid to W.W. W. Williams, Brunswick, in the amount of $75,376 for the purchase of three generators, one for each health department, Lorraine, O'Leary, and the county. Bids were open on February 22nd, and this was the most responsive, complying with specification, and it will be paid from account 23910-2801-440101. Commissioner, I hate account numbers. It's Homeland Security funding. I was going to ask. Uh, I figured it was. Yeah, you know. This crypto stuff kills me too, and I've been here a lot of years. So it's Homeland Security funds uh, these three generators, and it's it's a nice resource to the county uh, for us to have. So moved. Second. Any further discussion, Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Palo? Aye. Under job and family, approve and enter into a renewal agreement with Maximus to update the space report for Lorain County Department of Job and Family. The rate is not to exceed three thousand to be paid from account zero zero one zero one four nine zero one four five zero one zero six. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Palo? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Under children and services? Authorize various additions and deletions of personnel and children's services to utilize the Shell Oil, Gasoline, and MasterCard not to exceed $200 and $2,500 respectively for the year 2005. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Number 21 has been restructured. It is now going to read, approve and enter into an agreement between CSX Transportation, Inc., Florida, and Lorain County Board of Commissioners Office. Lorain County Board of Commissioners for the Rolling Heights Sanitary Sewer Project. And where is the Rolling Heights Sanitary Sewer Project located? Sheffield. The uh, uh, Commissioners, this is a project that we've been working on for about Sheffield. three years Sorry. in Sheffield Township. Uh, it, part of it comes, uh, we, we needed to get under the train sta tracks by Pearl and 254. We have a couple parcels of land that we were able to get during a uh, tax hearing on them, so we didn't have to get easements across those properties. To, uh, the, east, the property lies between Campana's Concrete and some uh, land that uh, Mr. Rowan owns, if you kind of get a visualization of going down Pearl there. So that easement will go right underneath the tracks there. And this is the final piece to put in this sewer. This is a petition sewer that we've been working on for the residents back there. Uh, so that's the area of Sheffield Township that we're working in and moving uh, west up from Pearl Avenue. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Under soil water, war contract to NLM excavating Norwalk in the amount of $36,377.59 for the Martins Run Ditch Improvement Project. Three bids were submitted, this being the lowest and most responsive. Issue a notice to proceed letter effective on or before April 18th and to be completed on or before June 30th. Authorize the county administrator to notify the county auditor to release the retainage at the said completion of the project and will be paid from account 9300242014916601. So moved. 
Um, Mr. Cortez, where is this Martin's Run ditch located? The, uh, well, Martin's Run. It, the it, one in Lorraine, Martin's Run? Yes, but it, it, it's in Lorraine, but it also runs out into the townships. It's, it's quite, a, quite a lengthy ditch, and it does a lot of drainage from the county. Uh, this would be uh, in the township portion of the ditch. We don't normally do the ditch projects in the city, but they do work cooperatively. Uh, Ken Connie has done, I think they did the 38th Street. Uh, 36, 36, 36, 36 Street cooperatively, but uh, we have we have some uh, um, I want to call it upstream blockage in the ditch right now, so it's not uh, being blocked in the city of Lawrence. It's in the township. Okay. I was going to say, Mr. Zunick says here. His, his? Mr. Zunick. I'm sorry, I forgot. You said you would be here. I saw your letter. I apologize. Uh, Michael Zunich, Lorraine Soil and Water Conservation District. The particular project, Solaria Township. It's uh, south of Griswold Road. Um, goes down to Albrecht. Uh, about 3,000 feet long of ditch. And I think in the future what we'll do is we'll be submitting a little map to you people so you'll know where each one of these little ditch lines are. Because some of these ditch lines, just like this one, are quite extensive. They extend for miles across the county. And we're only working on portions of them at a point in time. So we will be getting you a little map in the future. Thank you. Well, Martin's Run is, is one of the lodges, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's some other ones that are just like that. I mean, they just go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you, you hear the name, <laughs> and people are assuming you're working the whole ditch line, and all we're talking about is a couple thousand feet out of, you know, 10 miles of ditch maybe. There's not going to be problems downstream, like in the Lorraine area where the Martins run ditches. No, I mean, I think the, the, the same amount of water is going to ultimately pass through the city of Lorraine. I, I don't think there's so much problem with the ditch where we're going to be opening up a potential uh, dike no. and <laughs> have the water run through. It's this, just a you know, ongoing yeah. maintenance project. This, right? Yeah, th this program is basically a, a cleaning and maintenance program. And what we're really doing is improving, uh, if you want to get from an engineering viewpoint, it's the low water flows so the water doesn't lay in the ditches and mm -hmm. back up. and. Uh, so overall, is it really contributing to anything to the downstream? No. What it's really doing is it's cleaning it up to the point where you'll have better conditions throughout the whole channel. You just don't want to end up with a swell rather than a, a full Yeah, we're, 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 it's, it's cleaning and maintenance. And one of the biggest problems in the county is maintenance mm -hmm. on these ditches. Some of these ditch lines haven't been touched for 30, 40 years. And the, you have debris built up in the mm -hmm. bottoms and uh, trees laying in them and silt is built up behind it and what we're really doing is going in and cleaning all that out uh, We're not doing any major work in a sense of re redesigning the ditch Okay, okay. thank you We need a second. I have a motion. A second okay. <clears throat> Ms. Blair. Aye. Ms. Kukowski. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Mr. Cortez. County Minister. Just to remind you about my request for the executive session. Thank you. Mr. Annis, Assistant County Prosecutor. We have no lit new litigation filed this week. However, I think we're going to get some. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Commissioner's report. Commissioner Lurie. No report. Just been working on annexation all week. <laughs> I guess I could say thank you to all our, our administrative assistants who did a lot of work answering the phones and responding to emails and things for the annexation. Betty? Tomorrow is the Alliance meeting day at the college. I reminded you of it yesterday. That was so anybody see the television would know it would be there on, on the right day because by the time they see this, it's over. So anyway, yeah. it's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. That's it. I don't have anything. Thank you. No. Response. I move the reading be waived. Second. Aye. Mr. Kaler. Aye. Mr. Kowski. Aye. Public comment? Public comment? Good morning. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> my name again for you, I was here a few weeks ago, is Chris Goble and I'm with Hopkins Transportation Service. And as uh, County Commissioner Blair started out with a proverb, Regarding jewels, <laughs> regarding jewels and how to make them better, our company does the same thing when we get in a situation where um, we're not successful. And one of the things that we did do is we bid on the transportation for Lorraine County Transit. 
And what we did is we like to find out where our deficiencies were more than just what was submitted or reported to us. So what we did is we asked for the various RF the RFPs and the related documents that were submitted by various bidders, and we analyzed that information so we can approve, our, approve upon ourselves the next time around. When we do that, sometimes we discover things that are very critical to us that we could have done better. We also find some things that we feel that were not right in the whole process. And when that happens, we feel it's one of our rights to bring that to the attention to the areas or the authorities that did do the bidding process in attempts to help it the next time around to be better or to level the playing field. And that's what I wanted to speak to you about briefly. Um, I wanted to give the commissioners, anybody else who'd like a copy of what our analysis was after reviewing all the documents and some of the deficiencies that we feel were pretty striking. We went with some deficiencies that for the DB requirements were supposed to be met. It was not a good faith effort according to the RFP. They were not met. Um, one of the other concerns was the cost summary analysis. One bidder was off by a million five in their annual numbers, which when you're doing any type of cost analysis should have stood out or should have been calculated or added. Some of the miscellaneous cost items by some of the vendors were supposed to be documented according to the RFP, were not documented. One of the such uh, line items was 7% of the overall cost of that bidder's contract. That was more than their profit margin of 3%. Um, there was no information given in the RFP process or the pre-bid information regarding tires and lubrication that was considered a direct pass through or reimbursement, how, how we view it, from the county. One bidder did not even put an item in there, the current operator, because they were aware of that happening. That was not disclosed to any of the other bidders. In a, on that same line item, one bidder went from $126,000 annually for tires and lubrication down to $9,000, back up to $54,000. One year had zero in it. Um, some of these things we feel should have been analyzed, asked questions why, and readdressed, either in a written format from those bidders or through the evaluation process of calling them in and allowing them to do an interview, which is our, my understanding was not done with any of the bidders for clarifications, which was addressed within the RFP that that was an option to do. And um, I have copies that I will give to you for you to read over and what I would ask is that you read through the information and either contact me or either allow the opportunity to come back and give me further explanation of my comments so that the whole process that went through, we went through can be more successful and more of a level playing field. That was all I wanted to say. I appreciate your time and uh, hope you can enjoy this great day today that's left of it. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else who wishes to address the board? I move we go into it. I'd like to respond for a moment. Is that necessary? Yes, it is, if you would allow. I, I just want a clarification that a request for proposals is not a sealed bid. Uh, the reason that it's left as a request for a proposal vice a sealed bid is so that matters can be negotiated, discussed, expanded upon, and uh, structured as necessary. So it's, it's a, uh, the proposal is a guideline and the information is very important, but it's not all inclusive, it's not exclusive. It's, it's uh, steel bids are. So while I'm not trying to be um, contrary or argumentative to your position, uh, I just want clarification for the record that this, that none of these things that you spoke to would have constituted a fatal defect. They may have in a sealed bid process, but in a request for proposal process, they're not. And another thing with a request for proposal, it's very, it's more subjective than objective. 
and we had uh, a consulting firm that we paid quite a bit of money to that's a, a well-received and well-renowned consulting firm look over those proposals along with our local people and, and make this decision. Again, not to cast any uh, aspersion uh, onto your company. I'm sure it's a fine company. Uh, but they, they felt uh, strongly <coughs> that they had made the right choice. And uh, while there was probably some issues that could be debated back and forth, uh, it's much like the annexation that you spoke to earlier, Commissioner. You, if you do it this way, they're going to be back this way. If you do it that way, they're going to go back that way. It, so it could go on and on and on. Uh, uh, they, there, there was no uh, attempt to uh, not have a level playing field. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the terminology. It appears that you indicated that somebody had an advantage that uh, you didn't have, and that is... Uh, completely inaccurate. Whether you disagree or agree with us, that you're allowed to do that. But there was no unlevel playing field uh, for anybody in this process. Everybody was given the same materials and opportunities. Uh, did somebody feel differently about the point of views than you did? Well, apparently so. Uh, uh, well, I, I can understand the subjectivity to it. And I do know the difference between a proposal, RFP, and a bid. And if I use those terms simultaneously, or in conjunction with each other, I do know the difference. I wasn't and actually for your for you. I was just we were on, we do get viewed by the by the public, and a lot of times they don't they don't understand the nuances of the differences. And I do understand that there are some items in there that can, according to the RFP process, be waived. But I also understand that there are areas in there that if it says it's required by the FTA, which you do get funding from, that is a requirement. It's not subjective at that point in time. Oh, I and agree. I also, I also understand um, that when one operator doesn't put a line item cost in there and they specifically state within their RFP or their proposal that they will, this price is subject to this program still continuing and that information not being made public during the pre-bid meetings or any of the information that was submitted to any of the proposers, that that's not right. Uh, Whether it was, an, it was an oversight or not, the point is, I'm bringing this to your attention so that improvements can be made. I, again, I, I, I respect your opinion. Uh, the, you're, you're allowed to have that. Uh, you're also allowed to indicate that you think improvements to be made. Uh, we feel differently. And I, uh, uh, my team uh, did the evaluation. They did the review. They feel comfortable with the, the position they've taken. and. Uh, uh, we also respect your opinion on the issue. Well, I do have information, and I don't know about you, but 35% of the tax dollars for this project do come from state and federal money. 55% come from local money. And my 35% that helps pay for this program and other transit agencies, when I see a million and a half dollars being incorrectly stated, I don't look at that as being a small oversight. Again, I don't know where you got the word small oversight. I didn't use the word small oversight. You used those words. Uh, the review the review was done. They, they feel that they made the best choice. There was other issues besides economics that was explained in here that go into that review. Economics was a, a part of that review, but it wasn't a, the overall review. It was and, and unfortunately, some have to win and some have to lose, and I, re I respect the fact that you as a competitive company feel that it should have went to you. Uh, other people that are knowledgeable in the field felt differently. And I can respect that, and and no one likes to lose, but I like to know why, so next time around I can improve upon it. And it maybe um, my terminology as an oversight might have been a little strong, but anybody doing a financial review, as you called it, a review of those numbers, would have caught that. As, as Mr. Ferguson stated when he was here the last time we discussed this, I believe, and I'm recalling from memory, so I don't want to be held to this, but I, I think I recall that only 30% of the overall review of the proposal was the fiscal aspects of the proposal. There was, there was others. I may be inaccurate in that percentage. There was 20 points given to that. Okay. And the one operator I'm speaking to that made that mistake was given 17 out of 20 points. Uh, were they, 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 is it possible that they were able to correct that? 
that number? Uh, that, you know, I don't have that information. That's why I'm bringing it to your, your attention now. Okay. Um, so you can review it. Okay. Excuse me. When we have an open bid process, you mentioned the fact that it's negotiable. It leaves room for negotiation. Mm -hmm. So would his company and the other companies sit down at the table and and look at these items together and say, you know, here's a 1.5 million. Did could, that happen? It could. It, it doesn't always, but it could. It depends. A lot of times you'll have, and I, again, I didn't do the due diligence on this. I did speak with the team that did do the due diligence. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, but I'll give you, for instance, if we were negotiating a, a health care contract, I mean, we have a $15 million health care plan. We normally receive six or seven proposals from, from the biggest vendors out there. We look at the, the, what we feel is the best one or two and try to work with those. It's just untenable to deal with too many people at one time. I, I can't speak to the people what their thought process was with this one, but if I was doing it, I probably would have taken the top one or two proposals, I think there was only three or four. So I probably would have taken one or two that I felt were the strongest and then worked within those proposals. Uh, and if I wasn't able to achieve the results I was seeking, then I may have went to the second or third one. Uh, it's similar for a request for qualifications. When you do a request for qualifications, which is another whole process, you first you, uh, uh, work with the companies on their qualifiers. Then you pick the the company that gets the most points from the initial review and then you meet with them and you talk about their qualifications, then you seek a cost proposal from them. So there's various methodologies that are used to get to that. Uh, I, again, I don't want to, I did not, I do not know the specifics of this company's uh, uh, merit. I, I believe that they, they took the one or two strongest proposals that they felt were the strongest and they worked within those. That would not be uncommon and that's usually the way we do that. When this was brought before us a few weeks back, um, there was so much information, and, and I had asked for another week to try to digest some of that, and that wasn't the board's uh, decision to do that. Um, one of the things was, I know they're not a Lorain County company, but they are in our region, and, and I th felt strongly that, you know, to give them a chance. I don't know if anything was, you know, human error or but I wished we would have given it another week or so to, to really digest all that information. The, and, and I understand your position, Commissioner. We, we, we had a consultant firm. We just didn't do this in-house. Uh, while we have certain expertise and talents, and I'm, and I'm comfortable we probably could have gotten through the process, in order to avoid some of these very similar these, these situations, we asked for outside help. And we did get a very good firm uh, to work with us. And, and we did not give them any marching orders about where we wanted to be. Uh, quite frankly, it would have been very easy to stay with the incumbent. Uh, by the way, all the buses will be rumbling across Lorain County tonight. I believe this is the 31st. It's the 31st. Tomorrow, MV is taking over, and we're, we've been working all week on that transition. So uh, hopefully that will be fairly seamless to the, to the public out there. And I'm also pleased to tell you that uh, about 97% of the employees have ultimately be hired by MV that were working for First Transit. I, I don't think that they took the matter lightly. We did get outside assistance. That outside assistance did suggest that they felt that this was the best way to go. Uh, and, and I'm sure that we're, we're going to bid that contract. It's a contract that has to be competitively bid in the future. And I'm quite sure we're going to become quite intimate with this gentleman. In, in the future, well, I think the best solution would be to have each company sitting down at the table and picking each other's proposals apart and then finding the best one. We might not even need an outside consultant. Well, the unfortunate part about doing it is everybody has the best mousetrap. And, and it gets in, when it's subjective, it gets into points of view and opinions. Uh, well, 1.5 million is not an opinion. That's a solid number. What I, I well, I, I understand your position. Well, let me first say, you know, I'm not here to cause any type of dissension. I'm here just to give you some information. The, uh, we have bid this in the past when it has gone out before. So this, is, this particular contract is not new to us. The, uh, when we've been on other things similar to this, um, we operated Cuyahoga County's paratransit for 15 years there. And some of the other operators, uh, contracts we operated throughout the country. The general acceptance is, as Mr. Cordes says, they narrow it down to two, three operators. One of those operators generally is the incumbent operator. Just simply, you're expending them a courtesy, even if based on their numbers, uh, don't fall within that first or two, one or two places. And on a contract this size, we've generally seen where they come in and they do an evaluation or an interview with that particular company, 
with the selection process. And at that point in time, any inconsistencies that the evaluation committee has or points that the company wants to bring out uh, as far as their strengths are usually given at that point in time. As any of you know, it's easy to read something and judge it uh, by what it says. Sometimes when you add the personal aspect of it, such as the company you just voted on for the uh, Avon area, you know, it's nice to have that personal interaction. It gives you the ability to feel a little more confident in your decision. And, uh, you know, that would be one area that even though it was stated in the RFP was a possibility to do, that that step be taken next time to do that evaluation or interview process, as they call it, um, within this type of a contract. Thank you, Mr. Coles. Anyone else? I move we uh, go into executive session for the purposes outlined by the administrator. Second. Ms. Blair. Aye. Ms. Kukowski. Aye. Mr. Thank Taylor. You Aye. Uh, Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend.